Hey guys, how's it going? Ghostly Rich here today. As you can see, I've got a new dash cam here. It's a G1W, I guess they are. And um, yeah, it's a dash cam I got from Amazon. I'd been hearing really good things about them. And I figured, you know what? I'll pick one up. I don't really think I'd need it, but it's one of those things where, hey, look what it did for Russia. They caught all those meteorites. Anyways, so we got ourselves a dash cam here. Now, the first thing I was looking for is location. I mean, a lot of people put them right here. And then a lot of people put them, oh, I already stuck it. It's got a good suction cup. You know, up here, down there, down along the bottom. Me personally, I've, after driving with my car for a long period of time, I know that the one of the spots that doesn't get pretty much any glare is right here. So what I did is I bent this down like so, because I wanted to make sure I could get it where I wanted to, put this up near the top, and did that. Now I know that I'm not going to get a lot of glare there, and also if the, for some reason the monitor doesn't turn on, it doesn't blind me at night time if it's right there. I mean, this isn't a bad spot either. Um, it all depends on you. I'm going to be running mine right there, and I'll put it on maybe not that hefty of an angle, but a bit of an angle so that way it gets more. Because a lot of the times, I mean, you've got to think, you're going to be turning uh, left, well, in Canada, the United States and stuff. Um, but if, you know, if you're driving like... In England, you're driving on the right, or you're turning a lot to the right instead of the left. That will be a place that you want to aim, is you want it to aim on this side of the mirror, but over that way, so that way it'll capture that side, because that's usually when you get hit, is when you're turning the most common turn, which is the left turn. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. And of course, uh, just try to balance it out. I mean, these this is a wide-angled camera, so it's going to capture a lot. Just find your perfect balance point to make sure that you get both corners of the car. Another reason why I don't have it near the bottom, because this way, if it's up a little higher, I get a little bit more depth perception. So if a car is coming speeding at me and go and you know hits me or something's coming at me, it'll get more than you can see with this camera. If it was like that you see that much of the garage. If you're up here, you see that much. So you're actually going to see a whole, you know, almost a whole nother row, which is going to show you a little bit more. So the next thing I'm going to show you how to do is once you have your camera up there, because I don't trust any sort of camera's battery life and I don't trust any, uh, I don't even leave my GPS without it being plugged in. So my GPS plugs right there, as you can see, and I'm going to show you how to hide the wire. So stay tuned. I'm going to start tucking this and then I'll show you. So the next thing, that we're gonna do is you can see here I've plugged in the plug and now I've tucked a little extra up in here so that way if I need to unplug this unplug it it doesn't all come out but what you do is you stuff a little bit up there and you run it along and as you can see here I have a Bluetooth mic right here so I was able to clip a little bit of the wire in there to hold it up there so that way I can film but for you all you have to do is slide it in here and then take your finger and get it in between the headliner and the roof and you can just tuck it in like so. Uh, as I can feel here, I have a lot of wiring in there. Once you get over to here, which is your plastic clip, you can get like a butter knife or you can, if you have a plastic panel popper, you can tuck this in. Once you tuck it deeper, it'll actually sit flush because the headliner doesn't go too deep in there. So as you can see, we'll start working that in there. After, you, and I got a little bit of wiring I have to tuck in still up here, which I'll do, like I said, after I turn the camera off. It's easy to work in. After that, grab your weather seal and slowly work it out. As you can see, I got a lot of wiring going up there. So this wiring is going to be disappearing, or not disappearing, but I'll tuck it back in when I put the weather seal back in. But you're just going to tuck this in here, and then now you can run it down all the way to here, just with the weather seal. Just tuck it in along there. But to tell you the truth, we're probably going to be getting in here to um, run the wire, or what you can do is we'll just pop out this plate. You'll probably feel a, depending on the car, some of them have screws right here, but there'll be a pop pin right here for the Mazda, and you also need to take off the kicker plate. So with these, you usually just lift them off like so. Ta-da! As you can see, you also see my Dynamat job under there. And then once you get this popped out, mine's already out, it just pulls out in the center. But for most other cars, like I said, um, you'll probably have some screws. Just grab, pull up it forwards. You'll see that this one's just a pop. You can see a bunch of my amplifier wiring. Ta-da! And then from there, now we can go up and underneath here. Now, the next thing I'm going to be showing you is we want to get to our cigarette lighter. Why? Because then I can show you how to solder this if you want to solder it in behind the cigarette lighter 
and completely hide um, this plug. The other thing you can do is, if, depending on your car, is you can solder it to the ignition wire, or not the uh, ignition, you'd want to go with the accessory wire. Now if you solder it onto the accessory wire on the bottom of the column, you might want to go to the 12volt.com and they show you how to wire an alarm. Ignore the rest, look for the accessory wire in the steering column, and you can go off of that. That's what I would do if I were you. Or you can go off of your radio's accessory wire. So if you have an aftermarket stereo, you'll have a red wire in behind your aftermarket harness. It'll have like red, yellow. Yellow is a constant power feed. Red is not a constant. So if you want your camera to be on all the time, I don't know, as an anti-theft thing, maybe you'll want to solder it to the red wire. If you're going to be doing this so you want it to switch on and off with the car, then you'll do it on the red wire, not the yellow. The yellow is constant, the red is not constant. So, let me show you how to get first uh, in behind your cigarette lighter. Some people's will be much easier to get at, but with the Mazda it's still pretty easy. Just pop open your glove box like so, grab right here, go ahead here, and then pop this forward. Once you get this all off, as you can see this just pops right out here. And then you have two screws. After this pops forwards, you can get at all this. Now the other thing you might need to do though is put your hair up. Make sure your brakes on, but you might have to uh, pull the gear, or put this back so you can put your foot on there or on your brake pedal. Put it into uh, put your car into uh, ACC and then shift your car back to drive. Like I said, with the parking brake on, and then you can slip this out and off to the side, put it back, and turn the car off. Okay, and make sure you do not, whatever you do, unplug your airbag light while you have the car in accessory. Otherwise, I can throw an airbag light, which you don't want. So, like I said, if you're going to unplug any of the stuff in behind here, majorly your cigarette lighter, make sure you wait until this is all popped out. So stay tuned, and I'll show you once I have this pop forwards. Um, at, like I said, for hiding this underneath here, just you'll find tons of stuff to zap strap it to all the way to here. And then we'll be going into this kick panel over here. As you can see with that kick panel, all you do is take a fingernail or you can take something else, pop it forward. So look, even more wiring I've added in the car. Like I said, you're just going to go up and in there, okay? So stay tuned. Next thing you're going to need to do is solder two wires onto each piece. As you can see right here, which is the tip, this is going to be positive. So if you have a red wire, you'll want to put it here. And if you have a black wire, you'll want it on the corner. This is the ground. And uh, you'll need to know this for the next part, but it's just majorly solder this onto the tip. The easiest way is to apply solder onto the tip of your gun, press it onto the tip so it absorbs onto the tip, lift it off, tin your wire, and then sink the wire in on the tip. Do the same with the side. That's how I did it. That's how you get her done. So after you get uh, some wire on there, I'll show you what you need to do on the inside. So the next thing we need to do is after you pop out that front piece, which you see up here, now you can see, I'm gonna be able to see right through almost to right here. See how you can see all the way to the back after you popped out that silver? So now it's time to feed your piece up here so we can solder it onto here. And so stay tuned for that. Just get all your wire run, and if you want to, clean up the wiring. Tighten it all up and get everything right behind here so when we slip it in, it's super easy. Stay tuned. All right, guys. So next thing you want to do is strip your two wires on the back of your cigarette socket back. Once you've stripped them back, now we can test them. If you go and you take a look right here, I have the black uh, probe from this digital multimeter inside, and it's throwing some weird ratings right now because there's nothing going through the wire. But if you watch this, all you do is make, if, make sure you test it right now when there's no key inside the car. If it shows zero voltage, then that's a good thing because that means this is a switched outlet. What you do is you put your key in, put it into accessory. It's going to make that annoying noise. I'm going to make sure my music's off. And then, watch this. See how it says zero right now? If I touch my probe on here, it says I'm giving 12 volts. Now if that shows with a little minus sign 12 volts, it means you got your probes backwards, meaning that this one is actually the positive wire. You're touching it in reverse angle. So you just got to make sure that you put the positive wire on the positive and the negative wire on the negative. 
So, as you can see, I've got my probes in the right one here. So if you've got a Mazda, the black wire is the black, which is a ground, and then the red wire, which is your positive wire, or whatever you made your positive wire, which is from the tip of that piece down there, the tip goes to the positive. And after that, it'll make that live. So, after I get this all soldered up, I will show you exactly what, how it works. Okay, hold up. Oh, and also, as you can see there, I've also taped up the tip. Make sure you do that. Make sure you tape your leads up nice and tight so that way they don't go anywhere because you never want them to touch because then that just blows a fuse. Okay, so like I said, and then after you solder these ones up, tape it up. As you can see, just to make sure, I'm sorry for adding this all in, but make sure that you uh, have your wires up and already through the console so that way you don't accidentally solder it and then you're like, great, I've got to cut it to re-solder. Okay, so stay tuned. What's up guys, so I'm going to quickly show you. Now that we've got everything done here, we're going to go quickly over our wiring again just to make sure 100% before you flick the switch, it's all good. That's why I took the tape off here. You want to make sure your lapel here is connected to a, either a ground bolt or to the negative wire of your cigarette lighter. The next thing you want to do is take that tip, which is the positive, and you're going to take that and you're going to run it to the positive wire that's putting out 12 volts on your... Um, on your cigarette lighter. Once it's all done like that, we make sure this is plugged in here, make sure those wires aren't touching, just for my sake, for you it's probably already taped up. We're going to stick our key in here, and we're going to put it into ACC. Oh look, she fires up. As you can see, we can see that garage. If I want to see more of the garage, I can just do that. And now I can see the whole opening of the garage. So again, it'll just come with where you want to aim it and where in the end you end up putting it. And yeah, once you've done that, aim your camera where you like it. I'm already liking the definition of this. It's pretty high, considering. Uh, so I'll have to do also the settings and stuff. So now, if you watch, let's turn our car off. So you see that's on right now? I'll pull my key out so that way it doesn't beep. It'll probably take a second, and it'll probably shut itself off. There you go. So as you can see, automatically shuts itself off after about 10 seconds of the car being off. And that's the way it works. If you go to a cigarette lighter that's switched, if you go to a cigarette lighter that's constant, which doesn't turn off, then that camera will, you'll have to hit the power button on the top of it every time, otherwise it'll stay on, which will drain your battery, which you don't want. So there you go. So as you can see, uh, that's it. Now I'm just going to be putting stuff together. When you're putting this back together, like I said, make sure that, you know, if you want, you can use zap straps or tape. And just uh, make sure you leave some length in here. Don't put this back in yet. There's a lot of room back here to store wires. So leave this here. And now what you're going to do is just run the, or if you haven't already, you're going to run this up there and you're going to tie it up nice and nicely within the dash. You can always pop this collar off. It's not too hard. It's just a couple bolts. And um, yeah, so that's basically it. From this point, all you have to do is clean up your wiring. But that's good. All our wiring's hidden. It's nice and clean to the spot where you want it so you don't have wires hanging down right here. And I mean, the people are, might be like, well, what if I want to switch cars? If I were you, these chargers for cars now are so bloody cheap. It's not worth, you know, uh, destroying your car. You can leave it here for the next person and it adds selling feature. As you can see, I've got another one right here. So if I ever wanted to put the dash cam right here, I could, but it's majorly just for my GPS, which I have another video on, but it's the exact same video basically. Um, anyways, other than that, uh, I'll probably have some footage of, you know, how this thing looks up later on, but I hope this video helped you out. Please, if it did, press that like button. And of course, if you want to see more videos I've done with car electronics, be sure to press that subscribe button and check out my other playlists. Thanks again for watching and have a great day.